Okay, we've reached the penultimate uh, video in our series of updated videos on the balance of payments. Uh, let's think for a few minutes about the J curve and something called the Marshall Learner condition. Uh, it's often said, for example, that a fall in the exchange rate can help to improve a country's trade balance. This chart shows the sterling exchange rate. Uh, it's an index. It's a trade weighted exchange rate index from, 2000, uh, from 1997 onwards with 2005 as your base year value of 100. And this data basically shows the quarterly value of sterling against other currencies expressed as an index. And you can see there's been a couple of times, 2008 and again 2016, where there's been a quite a sharp fall in the exchange rate, a depreciation in the external value of sterling. Now, does that necessarily help to improve the UK trade balance in goods and services? Well, the answer is no. And often there is something called the J curve effect. So the J curve effect uh, basically shows the possible time lags between a falling or depreciating currency and hopefully an improved trade balance. Uh, the J curve, by the way, is the diagrammatic representation of something called the Marshall Learner Condition, which we'll come to in a second. Now, initially, a country's trade deficit, X minus M, the value of exports minus the value of imports, might actually get bigger. The trade deficit may widen after a currency depreciation. So obviously it's good to have a diagram to show this possible effect, the J-curve effect. On the y-axis, we have a positive and negative segment, a trade surplus above the zero line and a trade deficit below it. On the x-axis, we're just measuring time after a depreciation of the currency. So it could be a matter of months up to a year or two, perhaps. Start off with a currency depreciation where a country has an existing, an existing trade deficit. The J-curve idea can be shown by this curve. Initially, the trade deficit may get bigger uh, in the initial period after the depreciation, but over time, hopefully, there's a net improvement in the trade balance, provided that the Marshall Learner condition is met. I think it's unlikely, it's unlikely that the trade position would move from deficit to surplus. That would require a serious combination of events. So you may not necessarily move this curve into the trade surplus territory. You could do, but I think it's more realistic to say that you're hoping that the trade balance will improve. And of course, there's a net improvement there. So how do we explain uh, the J-curve effect? Well, in the short term, if the currency depreciates, if it falls in value, for example, the pound may fall in value against the US dollar or the euro. Um, what happens is that the price elasticity of demand for exports and imports tends to be quite low in other words, inelastic in the short term. It takes time for export business, for example, to increase their sales. The quantity of imports that we buy will probably remain fairly steady, even if the price goes up, because many contracts for imported goods have already been signed. So import prices are going up and you're buying pretty much the same. So you're going to spend more on imports. Export sales hopefully increase, but again, that takes time for that to happen. So you're not getting significant boost in terms of the value of exports. And indeed, the earnings from selling more exports may be insufficient to compensate for the higher total spend on imports. You see, if demand for imports is price inelastic, let's say 0.3 or something or 0.4, if the price of imports goes up by 10, 15, 20%, you will spend more money on imports. And the key, and that's going to worsen your trade balance. So the key is whether there's a sufficient change in export sales to compensate to counterbalance. If, it, if there isn't, the balance of trade may worsen. So really, it's all about adding, thinking about the elasticity of demand for exports and the elasticity of demand <coughs> for imports. This leads us to the Marshall Learner Condition. Uh, you don't have to prove this in an A-level economics or IB exam. You just need to know what it is. Um, the Marshall Learner Condition states that a depreciation or devaluation of the exchange rate will lead to a net improvement in the country's trade balance over time, provided that, provided that the sum of the elasticity of demand for exports and the price elasticity of demand for imports is greater than 1. Providing we sum the elasticity of demand for exports and imports, providing that figure is greater than 1, 
over time <clears throat> the trade balance will improve now the j-curve and the and the marshall condition are really effective ways to evaluate the impact of an exchange rate change okay here's a quick example so here's country a there's a fall in the exchange rate low elasticity for both exports and imports together they sum to less than one and therefore the trade balance will worsen for country a the elasticity is a higher more than one for exports 0.7 for imports add them together you get 1.9 the trade balance will improve over time because the sum of elasticities is greater than one country c well 0.8 for elasticity for exports but very low for imports 0.2 sum of price elasticity of demand is one in this situation uh, a currency depreciation other factors remaining the same exchange rate depreciation would leave the trade balance unchanged so please do use the j curve and the marshall learning condition as part of your evaluation of the impact of exchange rate changes on the trade balance in the last video in this series we're going to take a look at countries that run big current account surpluses